As Richmond and his guide went along, they came upon an indescribably beautiful place. He saw that everything increased in beauty as he and the angel got closer to the place the angel was leading him to. At last they arrived at a huge, beautiful building with an inscription on it, quote, The Royal Palace. They entered the building and saw a person sitting on a white throne. Richmond asked the angel who he was. The angel of the Lord told me that this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of mankind. He is the one who is sitting on the throne. After the angel told him that, Richmond said, Jesus Christ. When I mentioned the name Jesus Christ suddenly, immediately, they all bowed down to worship. All the angels bowed down and they began to worship. When he asked his angel guide why the angels all bowed down, he said, It is because of the name Jesus Christ. When we heard it, we had to bow down to that name. Richmond quoted from Philippians 2, 10 through 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That was Philippians 2, 10 through 11. Richmond saw the angels bow down before the throne of Jesus Christ, the Lamb. He looked at Jesus Christ's face and saw light radiating out from it. His face was full of glory. Richmond wanted to walk toward Jesus and spend more time in the royal palace with him. But the angel told him he had other things to show Richmond and that the time was running short. Richmond also saw the twenty-four elders worshiping Jesus, praising him. These were the twenty-four elders which Revelation speaks of. Each elder took his turn to bow prostrate before the throne. When each did, he set his crown on the floor and praised God with his face to the floor. He was there for some time before he stood up and rejoined the other elders. Then the next elder would take his turn and do the same thing. This continued for all the elders as they praised and worshipped the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. Richmond said, It was in this place I got to know what true worship is all about. I really saw true worship, great worship being done by these elders in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is where I learned what true worship is all about. The angel told Richmond they had to hurry up because he had other things to show him. The angel brought Richmond to another place. It was a building with a door. No one was allowed to enter through that door, Richmond understood. But the angel had been given special permission for Richmond to go through that door. When they had passed through the door, Richmond realized that they were descending down into the ground. Richmond says that the place they were in was very, very dark. I have never seen such darkness in all my life before, he said. The place was very dark. We kept moving on. And he began to feel heat coming from all around him. He began to smell some terrible smell, something awful, coming from the place far below him that he and the angel were heading toward. When he asked the angel about it, the angel told him he would find out when he arrived. As they went toward this place, Richmond began to hear screaming and crying coming up from down below. He was very afraid when he heard these sounds, and as they got closer, he saw fire all over the place. He saw fires all throughout this cavern. He saw fire everywhere and people crying out and screaming in the darkness below in this cavern that he had just entered. He described the fire as a consuming fire. He saw a woman in a cage. The woman was crying out for mercy, but no mercy was granted to that person. Right here I want to make a note. The reason why God would not give mercy to someone in hell is because they have already become so hardened that God sees that if he gave them a second chance and put them back on the earth, they would not listen to him, they would not trust in him, and they would not receive Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. Because when a person is in hell, it's because they chose to reject Jesus. Jesus did not reject them. It was their own choice to reject him, and that's why they would be in hell. That's my own personal note. Now we'll go back to Richmond's vision. So this lady was crying. After she was crying for some time, she started cursing God. A demon picked her up and threw her against the wall, and she continued to cry and scream and curse God. Now Richmond didn't offer any description of what the demon looked like, as far as I can tell. But there are different other visions of people that have been in hell, and they've seen 
demons that look somewhat like enormous monsters with scales. They have different shapes and forms, but these demons are tasked with tormenting people in hell. And the Bible speaks about the tormentors in hell in Matthew 18. And in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus told Simon Peter and the disciples about how they need to forgive. He gave the parable of a servant who owed his master or his Lord a lot of money. And what happened is he begged the master for mercy and for him to forgive his debt. And the king or the Lord or the master had great compassion on the, his servant and he forgave him the debt. But then the man he just forgave went out and grabbed a man who owed him money and he demanded that this man pay him back the money. Now the money that was owed him was a lot less than what he owed. But this man would not forgive his fellow servant and he commanded him to be cast into prison until he should pay his debt. And the Bible says, Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldst not thou also have had compassion on my fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. That's in Matthew chapter 18, from verses 21 to 35. So the tormentors, so those are demons. But now we will continue with Richmond's vision. Richmond said that there is no mercy in hell. Demons have no mercy. Richmond reveals a shocking truth. He saw pastors in hell. Richmond said, I also saw pastors in hell, and they were also likewise crying out. Right here I want to make a note to explain this a little further. How could a pastor be in hell? You may wonder. But it's possible for Christians to fall away. God speaks about that throughout his word. In fact, in Matthew chapter 18, like we just read, if we don't forgive someone, who's done wrong by us, then we cannot be forgiven. So even if you're a Christian, if you're a pastor, and you are holding a grudge against someone, and you will not forgive them, it's impossible for God to forgive you because you'll be hard in your heart against him. And there's many other verses that show why Christians can fall away. There's Revelation 21, 7 and 8, Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews 10, 25 to 31, and there's many other verses. There's Ezekiel 33:13, and there's Mark 9, 42 through 50. Jesus constantly told his own disciples that they need to pluck out their eyes or remove their hands if they are allowing their hands or their eyes to lead them into sin. Now, Jesus didn't necessarily mean literally cut off your hands or your eyes, but he's speaking metaphorically of getting rid of sin in your life, getting rid of temptations. So he's not saying literally cut your hands off, but he's saying do something, whatever it takes to get rid of sin in your life. Because he did say that you'll be cast into hell if you don't repent from sin, if you go after sin and continue in it. We also see in Revelation 21, 7 and 8, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So there is a difference between those who are overcomers and those who go after sin. The Bible does not say that once you are born again and saved through the blood of Jesus that you will be saved forever if you continue in sin. In Revelation chapter 2, Jesus was speaking to the churches, and he gave a message to the apostle John to share with the churches. And he said, I know thy works. This is Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. Jesus said, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So Jesus is saying, you may have a lot of good works, you may do what seems to be right on the outside, but it's possible to lose your first love, to go after idols. When Jesus was speaking to the church of Sardis in Revelation chapter 3, 
verses 1 through 6. In verses 5, 6, Jesus says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So you see clearly in Revelation chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, which we just read, that Jesus will have to blot out the names of those who were in the book of life, who did not overcome. You cannot possibly overcome the devil if you harden your heart and fall away. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3 says a sobering message starting at verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. That was Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 19. So it brings a sobering reminder that we can be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin and not be a partaker of Christ. He's speaking to brethren here. We will continue with part 3.